good morning. Um, I am Angel. I come from the Lucrutense University of Madrid. Um, I work as a full-time researcher in the EUPM group. Um, this group is a research group that has been focused on e-learning technologies for almost a decade. And right now, we are mostly focused on uh, serious games. So I guess that the majority of you know what a serious game is, more or less. I don't know about the term. Yeah? Well, we used to call them before educational video games, but somebody thought that that was too boring and changed the name to serious game, which I don't know if it is uh, something good. And right now, there's people that want to call them applied games. In summary, they are just video games that try to teach something. Um, in our group, we have been focused on this, and sometimes there are mixed opinions about video games. People think uh, that are great, or that people think that are a waste of time. Um, and like almost everything, um, is a mix of, of good things and bad things. What we like the most about video games is that they are able to recreate virtual worlds in which people can experience things. So this enables what uh, it's called the learning by doing. If you do something, um, it's more easy for you to learn to do it than if you read it in a book or in other activity that is not so dynamic. So this is one of the aspects that uh, is most, I think, one of the most important about the games. And another secondary aspect that is uh, very good for video games is that um, they used to be engaging. People, if they are well designed, can have fun with them. And people having fun, uh, you know, sounds uh, a little uh, weird, but people having fun while they are learning is always something. But of course, there are bad things about them. One of them is that you um, develop a video game, a good video game is expensive. And usually in research, or at least in universities, we don't have a lot of money to develop good video games. And that is the reason uh, because uh, sometimes educational video games are associated to this idea of low quality video games. They have poor graphics or poor sound and, you know, they are not that polished. And I know uh, that feeling is, is real, but it's also a little bit unfair about it. But that is a problem. And other problem that is more related to learning and how to um, transmit the learning process to game mechanics is that we don't know how to do it for every case. So, we know that video games work very well um, for teaching skills. Um, that is things that, that's, that you do in an environment, because as I, as I said before, we can recreate those environments in the, in the game and people can experience the environment, which in real life could be expensive or, or dangerous. But there are other um, ways of learning that are not that um, easily converted into video games. And I think these two factors add up to the third one, which is that um, there is low adoption of video games. Mm, not many people use them uh, in real life, unfortunately. I think because, well, sometimes teachers just don't trust them, but other times it is just that they can find a video game that fits their necessities. So this is a little bit about uh, the context of uh, serious games and what, um, some of the problems we are trying to solve. And if we focus uh, more the research on data analysis and in analytics, um, we are trying to solve a different set of problems related to um, how we can know if students are learning, analyzing the interactions they perform while they play video games or educational video games. And as I said, there are different uh, problems involved on in this. Uh, today, I would like to talk about one of them, one of, uh, I think is one of the most important. And if it is, if we can convert serious game in assessment tools. If we can use just the interactions from the game to determine if players are them. And at first it seems like uh, the obvious question should be, uh, the obvious answer should be yes. But we have uh, some problems involved. Mainly in research, in the papers we find right now about educational video games, um, the way researchers validate the games, uh, that is, they check that people is learning, is through uh, written text. So the experiment runs like, like that. They, um, they usually perform a pre-test with some questions or demographics. 
then students play the video game, and finally there is an exam. So the way that they determine if players learn is with that exam. Um, our hypothesis is that if the learning is happening in the game, and games are very interactive by nature, and people, is, um, when they play, they emit a lot of interaction, they press buttons, there are a lot of things happening in the game. Our hypothesis is that analyzing this data, we should be able to uh, predict the nodes in the exam. With which objective at the end to get rid of the exam and just use the serious game. So um, that is the problem that we are trying to solve right now. And instead of giving you um, a, gen a general uh, explanation of the process or, or, and how can we do that, I would like to explain it with a real sample uh, uh, of a serious game that we developed uh, a couple of years ago. So in this case study, we have a serious game producing interactions, uh, we have an exam, and the goal, as I said, is to predict the nodes, uh, the marks in the exam, only analyzing um, the interaction from the serious games. And the way we are going to do that is using machine learning techniques. Uh, some things about the game. Uh, this concrete game, in this case study, was a game about literature. Uh, the game represented the story of a classical theatre play. Uh, it was for a literary, uh, literature subject. Uh, it was a third person added to game on and click, like Monkey Island and uh, other games. I, I don't know if you know this type of game, like do, do, do click and the um, characters move and all that. It was a PC game and it had two educational goals. One was that we wanted uh, the students to learn about the play, to know the character, to know the plot. And the secondary goal was uh, we wanted to learn some concepts about language, like spelling, grammar, and other, and other things. The game lasts for 30 minutes, and of course it contained uh, the content, the, question, the answers to the questions that we were going uh, to put in the exam later. And this is the experiment. We uh, <coughs> the game. 305 students played the game. They were between 12 and 16 years old in eight high schools in Madrid. And the experiment was like the usual setup. We have a pretest with some demographics. The students play the game. And finally, we give an exam about the content of the series. So we collected data. We have two instruments. Uh, we have the series game and the exam. For the series game, we track uh, essentially everything we could. Uh, we track the times on each screen, we track uh, the variables inside the game, tracking the scores, but also tracking other things that probably weren't that important, like uh, Boolean variables controlling the logic of the game. And we track the choices they did, uh, because this is a point that created at Belton, there was a lot of conversations, so people interacted with character, it was answering questions and all that. And we finally track also the interactions, like the clicks, the, well, in this case only clicks because uh, the game was controlled only with the mouse. Uh, in this side we have uh, 359 data points per student, and in the other side we have the exam. It had eight questions, four about the plot, four about the, the language knowledge, eight data points, but we combined them all in one final score, which was one data point. So with all this data, we made a first attempt. We used machine learning, and again, our idea was to find a model to predict from the features this score from 0 to 8. So it's a mind if we were predicting well this, um, um, this score. We considered that a score was correct, uh, correctly predicted if the range was max, uh, plus minus 1. So we use a race classification and, and some algorithms. And what do you think? Did it work? Somebody think that uh, we obtain a 50% of uh, success or more? Well, we did. Uh, obviously, we didn't do, do a lot of things in the pre process. We used all the data to predict the model, and obviously, that wasn't a good idea. And there was also another problem. Um, if we look at the distribution of the scores, we see that most of the people obtain a good score in the exam, which is good, because the intention was that players uh, learn with the game, and this proved that they did. But the problem is that we didn't have so many cases to predict the lower uh, scores. 
but still we wanted to predict it. Actually, it was probably more important to predict those low scores than the, the other ones. So we simplified the problem. We thought that maybe we didn't need to predict the exact, uh, um, the exact score, but only if the players pass or fail the game. So we redistributed the data. We have a failing class uh, with uh, people with four or less points, and a uh, pass class with five or more points. And we reduced the number of features, selecting those that were that had the more difference between groups. Uh, you know, comparing the average of different variables. If uh, they were, for example, in a time, uh, one group, um, <coughs> the time that the, they need to complete a phase was lower than the other, we took that feature and we tried to reduce that number of features. And in this case, we end up with 23 features. And instead of trying to predict a score between 0 and 8, we tried to predict if they fail or pass. Uh, the accuracy in this case was uh, the percentage of players correctly categorized. And we also did use classification in this case because the information didn't make sense in this case. So we improved a little. Um, we obtained these percentages for each class, which is OK. Um, here, we probably wanted a higher value for the fake class, but uh, we tried different algorithms, and this is like the best version we, we obtained. So with the resource, we go back to the question that we uh, did at the beginning, and is can we read it up the exam with this model? And the answer is, well, it depends. If these resources are good enough, we could. If we are OK with only predicting 66% of failed uh, um, students, it's OK. If not, we should find other ways to improve this uh, model, maybe try another analysis, maybe try to change the game, to make it, uh, to produce more signals or more significant signals, we should do something like that. So, as conclusions, um, we think that uh, this idea of using serious games as assessment to automatically make sense. Uh, we are trying to to find a way of, of generalize this process, and we also think that this idea of validate new assessment uh, tools comparing to other assessment tools that are used uh, in research is uh, it's a good idea. And finally, um, well, machine learning is not perfect, but it can work for, for some problems if you are okay with some of the other. So that will be all. Thank you very much. <laughs> Do you have any questions? presentation I like the, the approach but uh, I have the question if uh, why if you think that this environment with a serious game can can add uh, something to the prediction different to for example an intermediate system so uh, are there any new uh, events that are good predictors or good, that are not present in other environments like IPS and, yeah. and then this can give um, a better accuracy of the prediction because of these uh, new features? Well, yeah, I have thought about that. Um, there are not new types. Uh, the thing is, is, there are more variables. So, for example, in a central system, maybe you have uh, activity where you are answering questions or doing things like that, then you have less data points. Because in a game, maybe in a minute, you have done a lot of things. In the game, ha can happen a lot of things. You have, you have done a lot of clicks. Um, you have made selections, that time has passed. So the, the type of data are the same, but the, um, the, the number of variables is bigger. So you have like, you know, more things in which you can look into. And, and do you think you, you are done with, with this uh, visual, or you can improve the prediction power? No, we are not doing this. Yeah, of course, of course, yeah, yeah. I mean, this was one of the first experiments. Uh, right now, we are trying to uh, model the things that we track from video games, trying to generalize the analysis, uh, looking for uh, this prediction to make it, uh, you know, valid for uh, serious game in general. Like you can apply this to any serious game using our model, and then you can do these predictions. Thank you.
can see if it works out. Okay, so thank you very much.